0-0-0-0-1. Okay, this is Uncle Bert Lamb saying hello from Beastburg. We're broadcasting from Planet Dark Star today to your planet Earth. We want to thank you for sending Earth songs to us in musical notation format and for making them show up as screensavers on our idle computers. This Dark Star Journal show is a sort of return gift from our little group. Here on Dark Star, it is 3215, the eighth month and a Wednesday. In fact, today is the 16th of August. My granddaughter, Ellie Ram, spent most of the day in the archive kitchen with her friend Beverly Toucan, cooking up a beet loaf. Grandma Mouse just got off the airplane from Overpond this morning, and there were already plans afoot for a special evening meal at her flat. Bina Raccoon, who helps Grandma cook her company meals, was to look after the kitchen, and the guests were to include the rabbits and the hats. My Rosabella, at home in the garden, was picking fresh vegetables, which I was to bring over later to Grandma's. Jack and Jilly Rabbit just spent two weeks in Overpond visiting Grandma up in the foothills of the Donut Mountains. Last night, they flew home with her. I figured Jack and Jilly would be exhausted this morning, but they came to the archive before lunch looking fresh and perky. Jack went in and talked with Mrs. Persian and Agnes Fox. Ten minutes later, Amanda Rabbit joined them, and they shut the door on the rest of us. Jilly Rabbit stayed with Acrylic and me in the kitchen and then asked me to take her upstairs. Sitting up in my cupola, Jilly didn't waste any time. Uncle Bert, at the Woody Spit Moot yesterday, young Astrid Beagle proposed to the kids that you and your wife and daughters all be given full visitor rights. Esmeralda Rabbit said your family is a special case and that for private reasons she, as principal and former owner, doesn't want any of you visiting the spit. Then Astrid told everyone that she'd talked to me about it and we'd had a special meeting of the Mootlet group, who have the final say, and decided that your family can come and go as you please. Astrid then asked for a vote of the spirit of the meeting about our new rule, so that we have the community's support, and that passed almost unanimously. Actually, Jilly, I said, Jenny Chinchilla told me most of this yesterday. That's good, said Jilly. My only regret was that I didn't deal with this issue earlier, as I've seen it coming. We want your help with something at Woody Spit, but it will only work if your family can freely come and go. Soon, Amanda or I will get back to you and explain it all properly. And on that mysterious note, we change the subject to Jilly's contract troubles at the Egret Club. I carried the hot beet loaf home with Ellie and Beverly, and then Rosabella loaded us up with vegetables, and we headed straight over to Grandma's. Going in the back entrance at 985 Memorial Drive, we struggled up the dark back stairway and were welcomed into Grandma's kitchen by Bina Raccoon. Grandma wanted us to go on through to her in her bedroom. We walked down the narrow pantry and through the book-lined corridor beyond the front door to get to Grandma's bedroom. Passing the sitting room, I noticed her stuffed chairs and sofa were missing their usual white summer slip covers. Amanda Rabbit stood up as we came into the bedroom and gave us kisses and left us alone. Ellie sat down on the bed beside Grandma and happily kissed her and hugged her. I pulled the dressing table chair around and sat facing them with Beverly standing by me. The room was dark with the heavy maroon curtains closed and it had the smell of a long empty room during a hot summer. Grandma was propped up in bed with a tiny shaft of afternoon sun falling on her face. It's so lovely to see you, children, she said. But, Uncle Bert, I had a special reason for asking you to come in. I arrived home to an official letter from the Prime Minister. It reads like a royal decree on fancy paper, inviting me to become Bulliam's new Poet Laureate. 
After all these years, Sebastopol Bunny is stepping down. Next week, Prime wants a talk with me before informing the king. I greatly fear it might be some sort of political trap, but I'm eager to explore the idea. That's wonderful, Grandma, I said. Well, yes, it is, potentially, but unfortunately, Bert, I've long promised to let my great-nephew, Toddy Mouse, stay with me for two weeks starting this Sunday. I know he's a difficult boy, but he's got some good in him. Dear Uncle Bert, could you and Rosabella maybe pick him up at Woody Spit when you're down at West Cleanser next weekend and, and then look after him in town for the following two weeks? Of course, it's a, a lot to ask, and I know it will be a bother for you as well, Ellie, so maybe you should be part of the decision. You and your dear mother. And if you say no, I will completely understand. Grandma stopped speaking suddenly, and it became very quiet in the room. I could hear the wind off the bay through the curtains and the passing cars on Memorial Drive. It struck me that the window must be open. I cleared my throat. I'll have to talk to Rosabella about this, I said. And also with Ellie and Acrylic. We'll all talk. Of course, said Grandma. And if you can't face having the little horror come to stay, he can remain at the orphanage. It, it won't kill him. When we got back out to the kitchen, Amanda gave us a sympathetic look. I'm sorry we can't take Toddy on right now, but with our magic show going up at the end of next month, it's too much, and anyway, the bunnies hate him, and I'm afraid the feeling's mutual. But if you do choose to have Toddy, I promise that Hat and I will do our best to help carry the load. I don't see Rosabella going for it, I said. Also, said Amanda, I'm afraid Hat and I have another favor to ask. We just hired Stanley Horst to dance again in our show this year, and he would like to spend the winter in your garage. I know he spent weekends with you in the past, but six months is a long time. We'd love that, said Ellie. I adore Stanley. Once again, I said, we'll have to talk to Rosabella. In both instances, she's the one who ultimately will take most of the heat. But then I thought, I'm the one who will have to talk these things through with Rosabella. Uncle, said Amanda, come into the dining room for a minute. I've got some news. Standing by the high boy, Amanda spoke softly in my ear. Jilly told me she talked to you about your whole family getting visiting rights at Woody Spit. We actually want to make you and Rosabella and your children honorary staff with full privileges. What does that even mean? I asked. I'll come talk to you about it soon and explain everything, but basically, you'll be free to visit whenever you want, and you all can speak at the moot, but not vote. There was a clatter as Jack and Jilly and Hat let themselves in at the front door. They burst through to the dining room and greeted me jovially. Have you heard the news? Amanda asked them. The Prime Eagle has offered Grandma the role of Poet Laureate. What's he thinking? Hat laughed. Is he out of his mind? He won't be able to muzzle her just because he makes her our national poet. That won't happen. Well, said Jilly, traditionally the Poet Laureate avoids politics and only writes verses about King Bulldog and his special family birthdays and stuff. Another theory, Hat mused. It could be that the Prime Eagle thinks if Grandma is officially made a national treasure, it won't matter how radical her opinions are. She'll just be our very own silly, lovable old dear, and the sting will go out of her tail. Good luck with that, said Jack. Her sting will probably just increase, and everyone laughed. Thank mm -hmm. you.